now because it makes sense. I happen to like the one-way Wolverine system. They were the first, and everybody else who copied can't copy it exact because of patents. So we'll see minor differences on them. I happen to like the Wolverine. That's what works for me. If you find it works for you, fine. If not, try the others. There's, uh, I think, five or six of them on the market now. Um, I brought along the, uh, the Sharp Fest. I left it outside. It really doesn't work very well. I'm a dealer for them, and I don't like it. I even spoke to the owner of the company and Dave Hout, who designed it. We talked about the geometry of it. They don't tell you it only works on bowl gouges. Um, they let you believe it works for everything, but it doesn't. And it's sort of a safety kind of an issue where it won't let the tool rock from side to side. No one's here ever had the tool go off the side of the grinding wheel, right? No one's ever done that? Okay, I, I didn't think so. I was just being sure. Anyway, um, it won't allow you to do that, but at the same time, it's restricting what you can do as far as the grinds you can make with it. So uh, I don't care for it. But again, it's personal choice. I like the Wolverine. When you buy the basic system, it comes with the two extrusions that hold the bars. It comes with a table that's adjustable and angle, and it comes with a V-block that's adjustable in and out. If you do any kind of fingernail grinds, uh, everybody know what fingernail grinds are? Anybody not know? Okay. You don't know? Okay. You know what a finger looks like, right? How, how you have that kind of shape? Well, the tools generally come more flat. So what we do is we grind the side wings away so that it kind of resembles the shape of your finger. For instance, well, here's a perfect example. Let me show you. This is called a fingernail grind, but I'll show you the difference right away. This is before, and this is after. You see a drastic difference? Matter of fact, I'm going to sharpen this and show you how to go from a brand new tool to a usable tool hold if we have time. Hold them up together and let me focus on them. You got them? Is that working? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's what the fingernail means. It's it's kind of the shape and I don't use the light anyway. So it's just the shape where I can cut into very fine detail where I can't reach it with the with the original tool. So they call it a fingernail grind. And in order to do that, we use what's called the Vail Grind Attachment. That's an attachment that works with this grinder. They have a new, not the grinder, the uh, sharpening jig. They have a new one of this version that they call the uh, Vail Grind 2. And what it does is it locks in the post, and just like the Sharp Fest, it only allows it to rotate. They're very dangerous, I think, and they don't work very well. Uh, this is really the best way to go. What's happening is liability issues. I would guarantee you that probably everybody in here that owns a grinder is not meeting OSHA specs. Because if you sharpen turning tools, you can't. I was at the, the uh, folk school teaching a class when OSHA came there. And they came and they said, we have to stop and shut all the grinders, unplug them, and we had to put these guards on there. I said, that's fine. Now, how am I supposed to sharpen? I can't sharpen with those guards. And they said, uh, you know, basically what he said was, I don't care what you do when we're gone, but you put, the, you put the guards on there now. It's a guard that actually covers the wheel, and there's no way that the tool will reach where it needs to be because the guard is covering the wheel. So they're designing that guard not for wood turners, but for people who just take a piece of steel and want to grind an edge on it. So anyway, this allows me to get that fingernail grind. That's what it's for. And this leg right here is adjustable so I can change the side angle. Now the instructions tell you this changes the front angle and the distance changes the side angle. You will find that's 180 degrees wrong. It works the other way. This actually controls the side, ang the side angle, and the distance controls the front. But it's a combination of the two. So if you move one, you have to move the other. Um, when I get into the actual sharpening, I'll show you what all it is. So we've got the grinder. We've got the wheels. The speed is decided by our own convenience. We have the jig. Now, how do we mount the grinder in order to use it? Everybody knows how to set the, length, the height of your, of, of your lathe? Everybody knows the height it should be? Basically, you put your hand on your shoulder where your elbow is, that should be the spindle height. Same as your grinder. It should be the same height as the spindle on your grinder. Now you ask why. Anybody ask why? Somebody ask why. Why? Why? Okay. You're working at the lathe all day with your tools and you create what's called muscle memories. You know, when you have to do something, you don't think about it. You don't say, well, I need to roll this about 30 degrees and swing the handle around to create that bead. You don't think about it. Your muscle takes over and it does it. Your brain tells your hand, and your through muscles, tells you exactly what you need to do in order to create whatever you're turning. Well, you're so used to doing that, you've got muscle memory, do the same thing at the grinder. You already know 
how to handle the tools, you've already got the motion down, you've already got muscle memory, do the same thing at the grinder. If it's the same height, the same muscle memory takes over, and you can create much, much smoother motion at the grinder. If you bend over because the grinder is on a bench, I guarantee you two things are going to happen. Your back is going to hurt in no time at all, and you will not be able to swing the tool to get nice arcs when you're sharpening it. It won't happen. If it's too high, it's going to be the same thing. Your arms get a little tired. You ever work above your head after a while? You know, your arms start to sag. Do the same thing when you're working on a grinder, and it's the exact same thing. You can't hold it and get nice even arcs when you're trying to sharpen something. So you want it the same height as your lathe. The spindle should be the same height. And when you mount the grinder, Every manufacturer has a different height spindle. So one way gives you a set of specs how to set up the spindle height above the extrusion. Do it properly. Also, they tell you to have the extrusion with the center of the wheel. Do it properly. It's all geometry. All the things we hated in school. Why do I have to learn that? I don't want to learn geometry. You're using it every day. So if you understand that you set it up correctly, all the geometry will work and you'll get nice, nice grinds. Okay, so we've got a grinder, we've got wheels, we've got a jig, we're ready to go. No. When you buy a grinder, I don't care how much money, you can buy a Baldor, you can spend $500 for a little 6 inch grinder, or you spend what, 6 or 700 now for the 8 inch. Uh, it doesn't run true. And it's partly the wheels, and it's partly the plastic bushings they put inside the wheels, but it does not run true. It may wobble a little bit side to side, there's nothing you can do about that unless you change the bushings, which I have done. You can change the bushings on there, and sometimes you get rid of some of that side-to-side -side play. But the in-and-out play, you're not going to get rid of, you know, a good quality grinder is not going to get rid of that. You've got to actually chew the wheels, and you've also gonna, you're also going to dress the wheels very, very often. The way to do that is we're going to use a diamond dresser. There they are. That's why I couldn't find it, right in front of my face. There's a lot of different types made. This happens to be an inexpensive T-type. It's got industrial diamonds across here. This is one that they tell you comes with a lifetime guarantee, but they don't tell you whose life. I think it's some old guy that works in the factory. When he dies, guarantee shot. <laughs> but anyway, um, they do the same thing. They've got industrial diamonds embedded, and you can put it up against the wheel with the wheel spinning, and you can chew the wheels up. Now, I highly recommend if you have a, a, a grinder with a light, do not turn the light on when you first turn the grinder on because it'll vibrate so bad it'll blow the bulb immediately. Want to ask me how I know? I went through quite a few of them before I figured that out. But anyway, um, I don't use the light very often anyway and I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. But basically take the bulb out the first time because you're going to see vibration the likes you've never seen before on a new grinder with these wheels. Yes? Talking about the bulbs, I find that those new fluorescent bulbs they work well in grinders. I'm going to teach you something how they don't work. <laughs> well, I know what you're going to tell me. You're going to talk about the strobing and the speed of the grinder. No, no, I'm not going to tell you that. No. Um, I'm going to show you how you can tell if something is sharp, but it doesn't work with fluorescent. It only works with incandescent lights. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to chew the wheel. Also, from time to time, if you can see the pink wheel, can can you see some of the black that's on this wheel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a transfer of steel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that to show you how we dress the wheel. Uh, all you probably ask, why didn't I do it before I came here? Because then I couldn't show you. It wouldn't be obvious. I'm just going to move the table to that side. I'm going to turn the grinder on, wait until it gets up to speed. And when it does, I'm going to put this, this little dresser on the table and go from side to side very lightly, no pressure. If you put pressure on that wheel, if it's got a bump, you're going to create that bump, you're going to make that bump much worse than it was because you're going to push in, the bump's going to push you back, you're going to play tug of war with it, and you're going to create more of an out of round than you've already had. So just very lightly, I just go across from side to side, and I'm holding it fairly straight. Now if you notice, if you can see, I don't know if this camera is showing you, but there's still a little black in the center. That means that the wheel is not perfectly flat. Uh, that means that probably the last thing I ground, I spent more time on one part of the wheel than the other, so I want to get the wheel flat. If you try sharpening, let's just say a, uh, um, a scraper or something flat, you try sharpening it where the wheel's got a dish, you're not going to be able to sharpen it. It gets very frustrating. So I want to make sure the wheel's flat. And you're going to look basically at the color to make sure that the color is even.
Just about got it. There it is. Okay. So now the wheel is dressed. So now it's ready for sharpening. But I'm not. I'm going to move this back to the other side. Does anybody know how to tell the difference between carbon steel and high speed steel? Gee, I didn't need to be here today. I've got a friend that lives in Indiana that, I don't know why, but he keeps sending me this junk. He'll go to a yard sale and he'll find turning tools and uh, he packs them up and sends them to me. He says, oh, I bought this at a yard sale for a dollar. I said, I, I, I'm not giving you a dollar. It's not worth it. It's junk. But anyway, it's carbon steel. What I use this for is to show people what the sparks look like from carbon steel. Then I've got a piece of high speed steel so you can tell the difference. Does anybody here not know the difference? You're the only one? Come on up here. Come on up here. Oh, you were hiding that. You didn't want us to know. No, I raised my hand. You can see it. <laughs> Stay down. Okay, I'm going to turn the grinder back on. And I want you to watch the sparks that come off of this tool. See the color? They're yellow. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a sparkler. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's carbon steel. If you look at high-speed steel. They're orange. And they're more of a straight line. Can you see the difference? That's one. That's how you can tell the difference. Okay. And the price. But if you, went to a, if you went to a flea market or a yard sale and you found a box of tools, how would you know? Grinder will tell you right away. It's on this side. No. Yeah. Not $50 worth, no. Um, so what he asked about was the one-way balancing system for the grinders. I had a problem with the left side here with a wobble, and I know it's not the, uh, I know it's not the shaft because I put a, a, a dial indicator on it and the shaft is running perfectly true on that side. Not this side, but that side. I had a wobble in the wheel. And I took the bushings out and I put steel bushings in there. Didn't make any difference. So I would used the one-way balancing system. It was balanced to begin with, so I didn't change anything on the balance, but I thought it would true up the wheel, and it didn't. It's exactly the same wobble that it had before. Never take, if you look at your grinder, you probably have a certain amount of wobble in there, more than likely. Never take a, the, the, uh, the stone and go on the side to try to true it up. It'll probably explode, and if it does, you're gonna get hurt. Uh, has anybody ever seen a wheel explode? It's ugly, you've seen one explode. Stay out of my shop, will you? Okay. Okay. I, I saw a 30 inch wheel explode once and it took down half of a wall and it was brick. Um, there's a guy, huh? Well, he was sharpening, you know, jackhammers? He was sharpening the blades for jackhammers, and he wasn't paying attention. He actually stuck it in, it got below the table. When it sucked it in, it jammed, but it, it was like a 15 horsepower grinder. It blew that wheel apart. And I don't know why, I think he was so drunk he never got hurt, but it blew the back wall out. It actually blew the guard right off and blew the back wall out of the shop, and it was brick. I mean, what a mess. It's terrible to see, and you certainly don't want to cause it. And I've seen a lot of them, over at the folks who are teaching over there, I've seen an awful lot of students not careful, and they run, they run the tool and they get it stuck in there and they take a big chip out of the wheel. Then they try starting the wheel again. Yeah. You don't want to do that because it'll be out of balance, but if it blows, it's really, it'll hurt you. And you can just take a, a piece of metal 